Okay guys, so I really wanted to actually show you what it's like to actually live on a building site where you used to find all your creature comforts has now become a place uh, where builders are currently working in. Now of course we've got to still eat, we've got to prepare food for the family and here you can see me doing the, some simple dishes, some simple meals in order to make it work. Um, the place is absolutely covered in dust. We know it's only for a short time and like I said we've got to eat so we've got to make the most of it while we still got the cooker because trust me it's going to get even worse once we've ripped this cooker out and we're going to have to find other ways of preparing meals. So obviously simple meals are the best. We're talking about porridges, stews, things that we can keep in the fridge and we can just warm up on the go. Now up next my brother came around to help me remove some of these kitchen cupboards because the builders needed to actually get underneath so we can finish removing the tiles. Now fortunately this was a simple task. Now I then had to figure out how I was going to dispose of all of the pieces of wood from the cupboards. Now we oftentimes had to eat upstairs because the place was an absolute mess and here you can see me and Abby just chilling having some breakfast together. So that's why I was just going to cut the wire and then take the fuse out and then it's dead. Cut this wire you mean? Cut the grey wire. Yeah. Put that back on the wall and then just leave the fuse out. Got a pair of snips. Unless we switch the electric off and cut it. That might be better the, than the, might be the, the box is up there so please safety first. The old lot, Nick, is it? Everything. Go on then. <laughs> ah, you're alive. I don't know why you're here. Well, he was going to grab you and scare you with the daylight. He jumped then when it went down. <laughs> right. I've got this old alarm system here which needs to go as well. I mean, you don't hear that very often, but I don't even know how to work the thing, we just inherited it. I mean, look how yellow that colour is, you know it's been here for a it's while. It's been here a long time. The living room's all boarded now, ready for tiling and uh, working our way through the kitchen now, which is nice progress. It's all been foamed around here, we're gonna have to take out this fireplace at some point. So, you were saying about taking. Um, those bottom pieces out, so we might have to pull this out. You were saying what you do is take this off, the surround out, mm -hmm. yeah, and then the fireplace will just gently lever out, yeah, and then you'll have your back in behind that, mm -hmm. and then you can get to take those tiles, tiles out, okay. or you just have a plinth at the same sort of level because mm. those tiles are there. This is only grout here. So this could be cleaned off and you could put whatever into that yeah. at the same sort of level or take it out, get take rid of the tiles out. and mm -hmm. have something Got you. that's uh, more uniform. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. Okay, so the rest of the kitchen has been ripped out today. Uh, we started last, well, we started a couple of days ago actually. Um, we've now done all of the flooring inside the living room, all insulated with one inch foam piled below the top, waiting to be tiled. But rather than doing it separately, we're gonna do the kitchen, bring it up to the same level by removing all these cupboards, all the rest of the quarry tiles that are underneath, and then batten it and insulate it for putting the ply on top, and then we're done and dusted. I'm here just trying to do some lunch for the family. Um, Got my trusty old microwave. There's more dust than microwave, really. anti back should sort that. Put the old, um, what you call it, the old oven out. I'm gonna give this to my neighbor up the street, an old lady who has been just amazing to us. She's got an old um, double oven, so I'm gonna try and fit that in where her one is because only the top part of her one works. So rather than chucking that or selling it, I think I'll just give that to her. Um, yeah, the living room. Um, they've, it's all been boarded now, so as you can see, all the tiles and stuff off the floor, the crud's been gone. They've put down wooden battens, don't mind me with my, my doctor's spoon. They put down wooden battens on the floor, and then they filled it with Celitex, which is like this one inch insulating board. 
um, expensive stuff really but it's better than not having anything under the tiles because it's going to be tiled on the floor heating is expensive and i couldn't be bothered to try and get somebody to come out and court me um into the kitchen i'll just give you an idea of the depth um how thick those tiles were with the mortar um they've literally just brought it up to roughly where it was before when we add the tiles on top it's going to be a little bit higher so we're going to have to take off like uh, around 10 mil thereabouts off this door so it's going to make basically the doors a bit shorter but you know should still be fine um, we're gonna have to do something similar here as well when we come into the kitchen uh, so this door we're gonna have to remove all this we're gonna get a new door anyway but we're gonna have to bring it up we're trying to match the level of the living room um, with the kitchen so we won't have a step up i hate step ups it's just a, a recipe for disaster um yeah so this is all done literally basically just waiting to be tiled now and the kitchen, uh, the kitchen. Taking off all the tiles off the wall on this side, on the backsplash um, where the cupboards used to be. The oven used to be in this corner. In the tower, we're gonna have the same thing there. Flat worktop going across in an L shape, coming across here. The sink's gonna be here. Um, we're just we're keeping the old sink uh, because it's it's usable, and I'm trying to save money. Uh, we're just gonna flip it around so that the, um, the bit where you drain basically all your plates and stuff used to be here, we're gonna put it on this side so we'll have a bit more worktop space. I need to get an extractor. The oven that we ordered from Ren is out of stock, so we're struggling to get the, um, the hub, sorry. We've got the oven, uh, which is a single oven by CDA. We were get, trying to get like a matching hub to go with it, a five ring one, which is bigger than what we had before but is out of stock everywhere I've checked. In fact, if you're gonna get new appliances, perhaps try and get them separate from whoever um, you're getting your kitchen from because what's happening, there's so much shortage of appliances, it's unreal. Even on AO.com, which is normally so reliable, you go on there looking for something, oh, I like that design, out of stock. Um, so honestly, it's not even a joke. So many people have waited weeks, if not more than a month, they've had to change and go and get a different one. So, or one of these other companies and buy it separately beforehand, keep them in storage. So at least when the time comes for your kitchen to be fitted, like me, you won't be thinking, I need to get a cooker hood. I need to get this, I need to get that. Because honestly, the stock situation is kind of dire at the moment. So a uh, new cooker hood and a hub is what we need, but everything else more or less is here. Plaster down here has been blown. Um, I don't know, it looks like they used to have either a chimney somewhere in here back in the day i mean this house is pretty old like 18 something um, but you can see a line running from the you know at the back there so either this used to be an entrance to the other side of the property the other property next door or um yeah there used to be some chimney or something so this is gonna have to be filled with plaster um it, it was only blown up until this point so we just dug that out but here is still solid down here was completely gone um, what I'm going to do tomorrow um, or later on tonight is take off all of this bottom bit that's blown and there's a special paint that you can get a bitumen paint which is like water resistant so I'm going to once I remove that I'm just going to clean it off dust it off and paint it in this black paint and that should stop any damp so that's caused by damp probably but it looks dry now I don't know if it was a long time ago or what had happened um, but yeah then you have all your cruddy pipe works and stuff and drains. But yeah, everything is gutted. I need to remove these tiles here, a um, few bits and pieces. So the plaster work in here is not too bad, if I'm being honest, but it's not the best, obviously. So I won't need to replaster, I'm hoping, um, but maybe like a light skimming or something. So I won't replaster down here for sure because it will all be hidden by the cupboards anyway. So there's no point actually doing that. So we've got more battens here, which are going to be laid on the floor, um, filled with insulation in between, and then put the plywood on. And next week, hopefully, once that's done, the floors will be tiled. The cupboards still need to be assembled. My garage is full of the, what you call it, units that need to be put together. So yeah, that's the next plan. But going great. Now here on our channel, we try our best to show you ways in which you can save money whether it's through DIY projects 
or personal finance and one of the way in which we knew we would be able to save some money here is by doing some of the jobs which the builder would normally do. Now most evening once the kids have gone to bed it's time for me to pick up my tools and get to work and here you can see me actually removing some of the blown plaster which is coming away from the wall. My next task will be to paint it with this waterproof paint which cost me around £20 and this will help to prevent any damp and mould from seeping through and especially giving you that horrible smell. By doing this overnight the builders will then be able to crack on with more important jobs like getting the flooring done. Now here you can see them actually laying the battens out which we will be using to help level the floor before attaching the plywood so that we can actually have a smooth level surface in order to then lay the tiles on yeah, top. Well, you guys are doing a good job here which is which is good. And I know it's fiddly and it's annoying to try and get this level with the living room but once it's done, I mean if we sell this place or move on and somebody else comes in and they want to change the tiles for example they won't have to go through the hassle that we went through to dig up all the old ones it's just not not them off the top but this this was inevitable yeah the age old the age of the house and like there that's yeah gone. <laughs> Okay, so here you can see the builders are actually cutting the plywood to size in order to fit it on top of the battens. Now underneath that, that was filmed with one inch insulating board. And the hardest part of this was actually to make these intricate cuts around the door frame. But suffice to say they made quick work of this and now the entire ground floor is almost completely boarded up, ready for tiling. Okay, so the only tiles that weren't removed from the floor, the original quarry tiles, were these ones by the door. And the reason for this is because we're getting a new door and we'll need the additional height, so there was no point actually removing them. Okay, so it's the end of day four. The builders not too long went home and um, we'll be making really, really good progress actually. Uh, so we're in the kitchen at the moment and it's starting to take shape. The floor has been completely removed and we're now um, almost finished putting down the foundation for the tiles to sit on so that's the, the plywood just like it was in the living room. So I'll flip the camera around and show you what we've done so far and yeah it's coming along nicely there's a few snags and a few things that we have to do which I'll show you now. So as you can see the living room is done, um, boarded up, waiting to be tiled and we started on the kitchen today and we managed to make good progress. The hardest thing was actually trying to get the floor level. Now, honestly, we thought the living room was bad, but it turns out the kitchen floor was even worse. Um, so it was a real struggle to get this level, but we managed to get there eventually, uh, putting the battens down before putting some insulation in between, started to put the plywood on top, and we're hoping that the scraps that we've got left um, will go along that side just to um, you know, cover underneath where the kitchen unit is going to be and then we've got a larger piece outside in the corridor to fit here now the problem we have is that this radiator is too low to the floor uh, one of the valves that you basically use just down here to let the water out is too close to the floor so when the plywood goes under there and the tiles um, there won't be any space to, to actually fit it so we will have to take this radiator off drain the water out of it and hopefully um, take the brackets off the wall that are actually holding the radiator I um, don't know if you can see them behind there some brackets just there to remove them and put them higher on the wall hopefully so that the radiator won't touch on the tiles we also need to remove these tiles from behind it anyway um, and re, uh, you know, and look after this wall I think we're going to remove any paper that's on there and re-skim it so um, I've already given this section of the wall one coat of that waterproofing paint and it's been very tricky to paint it actually because there's so much loose debris and dust on there. However, I did my best and I will be doing another coat later on this evening once the kids go to bed. Uh, on this wall, 
I'll be trying to strip off whatever tile adhesive is on there. Um, easier said than done, but I'll do my best. As well as um, soaking this wallpaper, which has been painted, and to try and see if we can peel that off. Because this whole wall here is going to be um, skimmed, you know, giving it a light skim to give it a nice finish so that we can paint it um, rather than, you know, taking it back to brick and redoing it. And I suppose the same is going to be said for over this area as well. So um, yeah, good progress. You can see all the pipe work here and all this old um, plaster, which, you know, it's fine. It's not blown, even though it looks pretty bad, it's, it's not blown, it's okay. So we won't be taking that off. You won't see it anyway, because, you know, the units will be hiding it and it will be coming up to this level. And then the next thing we've got to do is remove these tiles from around the window. It's a bit delicate and it will need to be refilled which is why we sort of left it for now and certainly last but not least this section will need to be um, refilled as well because there was a lot of blown plaster just like it was at the bottom there these switches will need to be moved because our cooker hood is going to be sort of in this section and you need to have it a certain distance away from the cooker hood so i'll have to get an electrician in to sort all of these sockets um, along this wall um, at some point but yeah good progress so far at least the dust has been suppressed because we've got some flooring um, starting to go down. So uh, day four, today's day four, um, looking good so far. Um, did a few cupboards yesterday, started putting them together. So far I've had one that was broken, which I've ordered a spare part for, for the base of one of the, the units. So it had like a massive chip in one of them. So I didn't even attempt to put that in. I just ordered a new one straight away. Um, so yeah, coming on nicely. Yeah.